Hello everyone. Uh, today we shall continue with lipids and fatty acids as another topic of biochemistry uh, that is 4.1 chemistry and metabolism of lipids. So the learning objectives for you will be to be able to define lipids, classify lipids, list their functions in the body, classify fatty acids, enumerate the properties of fatty acids. So we'll begin with the definition of lipids. Before we begin with the definition of lipids, I would just like you to think for a moment what exactly comes to your mind when you think of lipids. On an average, a person, uh, when he thinks of lipids, it is generally considered as a harmful substance that is present in our food, it's something uh, fatty, uh, which causes various disorders. But lipids are very important macromolecules of the body and they are defined as heterogeneous group of compounds that are freely soluble in non-polar organic solvents such as benzene, chloroform, ether, alcohol, acetone, etc. They are relatively insoluble in water. The functions of lipids are chiefly that they are stored form of energy and the stored lipid is stored as triglycerides. They are important structural components of biomembranes. They can act as metabolic regulators um, in form of steroid hormones. They also act as surfactants, detergents and emulsifying agents. They are electric insulators in neurons. They insulate against temperature um, as subcutaneous fat. The shape and contour of the body uh, is provided by lipids. Um, and lipids protect internal organs uh, as there are pads of fat around the vital organs of our body. The absorption of fat soluble vitamins A, D, E and K are also um, possible because of lipids. The applications of lipids uh, clinically are excessive fat deposits uh, which causes obesity if the fat deposits in the truncal region, it is called truncal obesity and it's a risk factor for heart attack. Cholesterol and lipoprotein metabolism is altered and this may cause atherosclerosis and cardiovascular disease. Uh, lipoproteins are altered causing dyslipidemia and ketosis in diabetes mellitus. So now we begin with classification of lipids after having understood what are lipids. So lipids are classified as simple lipids, compound lipids, derived lipids and lipids complex to other compounds. Let us see what are simple lipids. They are esters of fatty acids with glycerol or higher alcohol. So lipids can be of two types that is triacylglycerol or triglyceride or neutral fat and waxes. So these are the two examples of simple lipids. Come to the compound lipids. Compound lipids are fatty acids esterified with alcohol. Additionally, they contain other groups. Depending on these extra groups, they are subclassified into phospholipids containing phosphoric acid and non-phosphorylated lipids. Derived lipids are lipids uh, that are uh, derived from lipids or precursors of lipids, example fatty acid, cholesterol, prostaglandin, leukotrienes. The fourth category of lipids or the fourth class of lipids are lipids complex to other compounds. These include proteolipids and lipoproteins. Now we shall look uh, at this in detail about fatty acids. Fatty acids are derived lipids. They are most common component of lipids in our body. They are formed only during metabolism in humans. General formula of fatty acids is RCOOH. COOH is the carboxyl group and it is the functional group. R group is the hydrocarbon chain of fatty acids 
the chain length and degree of unsaturation varies. Fatty acids are classified, which we shall see in the next. But before that, we look into the numbering of carbon atoms. So when it is a saturated fatty acid, the suffix anoic is added after the hydrocarbon and palmitic acid and stearic acid are most abundant fatty acids in the body. The numbering of carbon atoms is uh, uh, in two ways. One is the delta system which starts from the carboxy end of the fatty acids. So whenever the numbering st starts from the carboxy end, the delta it is known as the numbering of carbon atom by delta system and the omega system wherein the numbering starts from the methyl end. So you can see in delta system the first carbon starts from the right hand side whereas in omega system uh, the numbering starts from the left hand side. So the omega this is the first carbon and it is named as omega 1 omega 2, omega 3, omega 4, omega 5. The classification of fatty acid depends on number of carbon atoms, whether it is even chain or odd, whether the carbons are even in number or odd in number. Then depending on the chain of hydrocarbon uh, length, that is whether it is short, medium, long or very long, uh, depending on unsaturation of hard hydrocarbon, whether there is presence of double bond or absence of double bond. Let us look into the details. Depending on the number of carbon atoms, the, it is further classified as even chain and odd chain, which I already mentioned. Even chain have carbon atoms 2, 4, 6 and further. They are mostly uh, naturally occurring lipids and they have even chain fatty acids. The odd chain fatty acids have odd number of carbon atoms. They are seen in microbial cell walls. They are also present in milk. The second type of classification is dependent on the length of the hydrocarbon chain. Based on that, it is classified into four types. The first is the short chain with 2 to 6 carbons. Second is the medium chain with 8 to 14 carbons. Third class is the long chain fatty acids with 16 to 14 uh, carbons. And the fourth is more than 24 carbons, which is a very long chain fatty acid. Depending on the nature of hydrocarbon chains, uh, it can be saturated fatty acid, unsaturated fatty acid branch chain fatty acid or hydroxy fatty acid. Unsaturated fatty acid can be further classified as monounsaturated fatty acid having a single double bond whereas polyunsaturated fatty acids are defined as fatty acids having two or more double bonds. So this was the third way of classifying the fatty acids. Now we uh, uh, we will uh, discuss a little more about saturated fatty acids. So let us see what is the structural formula. It is CH3, CH2, whole bracket N and COOH. Now this portion will vary. It may be 0 to N number of C, uh, CH2 groups. Example is acetic acid, butyric acid, palmitic acid, stearic acid. And all these have different number of CH2 groups. For example, in acetic acid, there are no CH2 groups. In butyric acid, there are two. In palmitic acid, there are 14. And in stearic acid, there are 16. So let us look into the examples of some saturated fatty acids. Acetic acid has two carbons and it is the smallest saturated fat T acid present in vinegar. Butyric acid and caproic acid are also saturated fatty acids present in butter. 
capric acid, lauric acid and myricetic acid with 6, uh, sorry, with 10, 12 and 14 number of carbon chains are present in coconut oil. Palmitic acid has 16 number of carbons and it is a long chain fatty acid present in body fat. Stearic acid is a has 18 number of carbons they are also saturated long chain fats present in body fat uh, whereas arachidic acid is a uh, fatty acid having 20 carbons and they are also long chain fatty acids present in peanut oil or groundnut oil uh, now propionic acid is a, an example of odd chain fatty acid having three carbon chains and it is generally uh, seen in metabolic pathways of odd chain fatty acid where propionic acid is the end product. Now we come to the unsaturated fatty acids where the suffix enoic is added after the systemic name. Uh, they are of two types monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fatty acid. Naturally occurring unsaturation has cis configuration, prolonged heating converts it to trans configuration. The chemical properties of polyunsaturated of unsaturated fatty acids resemble to the reactions of saturated fatty acids. Some properties are exhibited due to the double bond. Now in geometrical isomerism, as you know, they exist in cis and trans position. So this is the cis unsaturated fatty acid. The double bond is in cis position, whereas in trans it is in uh, the double bond is in uh, the groups are aligned in the trans position to the double bond. So here you can see that this is the double bond and the uh, hydrocarbon groups are in cis position in relation to the double bond whereas in trans fatty acids they are in opposite direction uh, in relation to the double bond. Now we come to some examples of unsaturated fatty acids. Uh, these are even chain fatty acids like palmitolic acid, oleic acid, 16 and 18 carbon chain in length both have uh, both have uh, single uh, unsaturation and they are present in body fat. Erucic acid and nervonic acid are omega-9 fatty acids present in mustard oil and brain lipids. Linoleic and linolenic acid are both 18 carbon chain length unsaturated fatty acids. Uh, but linoleic acid has two double bonds and it is known as the omega-6 fatty acid whereas linolenic acid is has three double bonds known as omega-3 fatty acids both are present in vegetable oils arachidonic acid has 20 carbon chains length and it has four double bonds it is also present in vegetable oils the other uh, important unsaturated fatty acids are Icosa pentanoic acid, docosa pentanoic acid and docosa hexanoic acid. All these are omega-3 fatty acids of 20 and 22 carbon chain length having uh, different double bonds and they are generally present in fish oils and brain. So let us look at the monounsaturated fatty acids which have a single double bond and oleic acid is the most common fatty acid having 18 carbons and the other examples are palmitolic acid and ileic acid. So this is the example stearic acid. This is how uh, the fatty acid is present in form of a wave and uh, the stearic acid having 18 carbon chain length has no unsaturation and when there is an unsaturation induced, introduced at the ninth position, this is the cis configuration because both on both sides the carbon chain is in the same plane. So it is cis configuration 
and this is known as oleic acid oleic acid is also known as omega 9 fatty acid because from the methyl end the unsaturation is at the 9 between the 9th and the 8th uh, carbon uh, it is also known as delta 9 because from the carboxy end the unsaturation is at also at the 9th between the 9th and the 10th carbon So now we come to polyunsaturated fatty acids that exist in cis configuration in naturally occurring lipids. Examples are linoleic acid and linolenic acid. These are the two basic polyunsaturated fatty acids of the uh, from which the uh, other uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids can be synthesized. So uh, they are essential fatty acids and unsaturated fatty acids uh, have three families that is omega-3, omega-6 and omega-9. Omega-3 uh, family has linoleic acid from which uh, EPA and DHA are synthesized. Omega-9 has linoleic acid from which arachidonic acid is synthesized and omega-9 includes oleic acid uh, which has the uh, the example is oleic acid. Now, uh, omega-3 family uh, includes 18 carbon chain length alpha linolenic acid which has three double bonds. It is an essential fat and it is the precursor of other omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids. These uh, uh, examples of uh, these include icosapentenoic acid Icosa means 20, pentenoic acid means 5 double bonds. So it has, it is 20 carbon chain length. It is known as timnodonic acid and it has 5 double bonds. Docosa hexenoic acid, again docosa means 22 and hex, hexa means 6 double bonds and it is a 22 carbon chain length also known as sarvonic acid and it has 6 double bonds. It is present in fish oils and it is of great nutritional importance and all these fatty acids belong to omega-3 unsaturated fatty acids family. The omega-6 fatty acid family include gamma linoleic acid which is 18 carbon in length. It has three double bonds. Example, another example is linoleic acid which is 18 carbon and it has two double bonds and it is also an essential fatty acid and it is the precursor of other long chain and very long chain polyunsaturated fatty acids of omega-6 family. These include arachidonic acid which has 20 carbon chain length and four double bonds. Arachidonic acid is the precursor of prostaglandins which plays several roles in our body which we shall study later on. So the clinical significance of essential fatty acids are that linoleic acid and linolenic acid cannot be synthesized in the human body hence they are essential in the diet. Uh, they are present at second carbon of glycerol of phospholipids they decrease the risk of atherosclerosis, CVDs and deficiency of essential fatty acid may lead to fatty liver, hyperkeratosis, acanthosis of skin and reduced efficiency of oxidative phosphorylation. These are some images. As you can see, this is a healthy liver and this liver has a lot of fat, this yellowish these things are all deposition of fat. So this is a healthy liver in comparison to fatty liver. Acanthosis, these are the marks around the neck region. This is acanthosis and hyperkeratosis. You can see a lot of dead skin in the sole of the feet. This may also be seen in the palms. Now we come to trans fatty acids. Trans fatty acids are present in dairy products and in hydrogenated vegetable oils. 
they are generally considered to be injurious to health trans fatty acids are used in food industry as they increase the shelf life of fried food oils containing pufa also have high content of trans fatty acids fast food preparations have a high content of trans fatty acids now we come to the properties of fatty acids they are in broadly categorized into six types these are the chemical properties of fatty acids they include hydrogenation halogenation melting point salt formation ester formation oxidation of fatty acid hydrogenation where unsaturated fatty acid may be converted to corresponding saturated fatty acid by addition of hydrogen ions to the double bond let us see how so this is linolenic acid which has three double bonds which is converted to linoleic acid by adding two hydrogen atoms at each step when finally it is completely saturated and this saturated 18 carbon length fatty acid is known as stearic acid the hydrogenation of oils can lead to solidification and saturation example vanaspati dalda now we come to the next that is halogenation where addition of two halogen atoms for each unsaturation at each double bond is seen now oleic acid plus i2 will give diiodo oleic acid the number of halogen atoms taken up will depend on the number of double bonds so it is an index of degree of unsaturation so if we have an unknown sample of oil and we want to know the degree of unsaturation we have to carry out the halogenation test and if more number of iodine molecules are consumed that means there is the sample has more unsaturated fatty acids and if less iodine molecules are consumed that means it has lower degree of unsaturated fatty acids now we come to melting point the short chain and medium chain fatty acids are liquids whereas the long chain fatty acids which are saturated are solids at 25 degree celsius with increase in chain length the solubility decreases and melting point and boiling point increases now we come to salt formation which is a very important process commercially and physiologically saturated fatty acid and saturated fatty acid form salt with alkali so whenever a salt uh, whenever an acid reacts with alkali we know that it forms a salt we have seen these reactions earlier so this is acetic acid plus naoh which gives sodium acetate and releases one molecule of water the sodium and potassium salts of long chain fatty acids are called soaps calcium and magnesium soaps are insoluble calcium soaps are used in grease alkyl sulfate and alkyl sulfonate are detergents so these are various types of salts which acts as soaps grease and detergents but basically they are reaction of acid with alkali to form salts now we come to ester formation where alcoholic group reacts with a base to form an ester let us see how both saturated and unsaturated fatty acid form esters with alcohol especially with glycerol fatty acids can form mono di tri esters with alcohol groups of glycerol so this is the ester where acid group is reacting with the alcohol group and forming an ester oxidation of fatty acids 
All fatty acids undergo oxidation in the body to give energy. Fatty acids can generate lot of energy in form of ATP and the pathway by which they generate this energy is known as beta oxidation. It's the major process by which fatty acids are Thank you. Hope you enjoyed listening to the lecture and learned interesting facts about lipids.